The White House says the annual budget deficit is set to surpass $1 trillion this year. That's actually the highest deficit we've had, excluding the four years following the Great Recession. So, Christina, in a growing economy, shouldn't the deficit be shrinking? You would think, and that's the big debate, the fact that we're talking about this $1 trillion mark uh, that would actually come at the end of fiscal year, so October 1st, and the fact that the national debt level, which is what the government owes, is at $22.5 trillion. There you go. There's that lovely clock that we have on the screen. But just over the last two years or so, we have seen an increase in spending, and it's, we can't just pinpoint it all onto one administration or another because you do have baby boomers that are aging, so that's putting a burden on mandatory spending. You also have uh, bipartisan support for increase in spending on both sides when it comes to defense and domestic issues. And then this is where it can get a little bit murky, and maybe Robert can weigh in the fact that the tax cuts, according to the Congressional Budget Office, could add $1.5 trillion to our national debt over the, the next decade or so, but overall, our economy is still growing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the Democrats were always big spenders, Christina, and the Republicans used to be. I don't know. Remember fiscal conservative? Fi, fi, what happened to fiscal conservative? Nothing what is the is same anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where, 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 where are the fiscal conservative? And you know, the president promised he campaigned on talking about wiping out not only just the deficit, Both. but wiping on the debt, out the debt. Meanwhile, he's telling associates privately that the debt is not his problem. I got to say, a lot of these fiscal conservatives, I think, are complete frauds for not standing up and, and putting the same type of heat against Trump as they did against Obama when Obama wanted to spend well, uh, like mad like he did. Jonathan, we put, as someone who helped advise Trump on this, we always put growth first. That was our jobs and growth were our highest priorities, as they should be. And look, I, I don't like large deficits. I don't like runaway spending. And, and it is true that we have a bipartisan spending problem. But look, when you have growth like this, you, you the, the Congressional Budget Office now is predicting that the, the economy is going to be $6 trillion over the next 10 years, 10, uh, $6 trillion larger in the next 10 years than they than they thought it would be. And that's in large part because of the tax cuts. So I don't buy this idea that the tax cuts have added to the deficit. Well, Steve and I have been debating <laughs> over this for, I think, about five I years you, now. You wouldn't let me and get away so with that. We had our kumbaya <laughs> moment. Now we'll go into something different. I mean, listen, it is very clear that the revenues for our country are not coming in fast enough because of the tax cuts. That's just that's just math. Mm -hmm. Number two, the deficits are ballooning. So this great GDP growth we all talked about, Steve, I remember quoted, we argued, he said it was going to be 5 possibly 6%. Yes, it's higher than where it was in the past administration, but it is not where it was predicted. The deficits are higher. And the truth is, this tax cut was too big versus the revenues, Fine. and that's why we're in a problem situation. And I would just like to add... I want to also agree with Jonathan. I can't believe that this Democrat is now more fiscally conservative yeah. than the entire Republican Party. But just to jump in, I, I know Kevin. Wait, and I'm for trade. I know Kevin. So those two things, I don't in. even understand it so, anymore. But to Steve's point, isn't it even premature for us to say anything just yet because we haven't had that much growth in order to see if it can offset the increase in spending? I was just giving was... him a bone that oh, it you're was giving better a bone. growth because okay. I knew Sorry. he was going to hit Obamaomics immediately. Listen, I mean, we're we're talking about this during good times, which is is very nice uh, for all of us, but the problem is is that sh what happens when we get into a recession, right? I mean, I think that's the biggest situation that we need to be focused on because I think if we, we see our deficits where they are now, they'll only balloon even yeah. more, right? Yeah, but the government's going to try to slip And the answer is, what's going to cause well, that well, deficit is to, is to repeal the tax cut. I mean, the tax cut is what it got us, you know, guys, from 1.5% growth to 3% to growth today. I mean, I, I will take it if, if it costs that's a little bit more That's short-term thinking, I tell you, oh, Let me just say, I'll no, tell you what I'll, we're going to get, whether we're not we're in a recession or not. We're going to get a $2 trillion infrastructure program from a con so, so, supposedly conservative president that is de facto endorsed by fiscal conservatives. I hate to say it, like Steve Moore, like Larry no. Kudlow, people that used to hold government spending to the fire now just kind of pass it along when government wants to spend trillions of dollars Jonathan, that they would have opposed Obama for doing the same. It's going to be private finances. It's Listen, all going to be financed with private money, not tax dollars.